Well, good evening. Um, thank you for joining me if you're on the line or in the chat or if you want to jump on. Uh, I'd really would welcome uh, anyone of all genders to this feminist and fun conversations. And uh, really, this is just a friendly space. So um, if anyone wishes to join, I'm hoping Douglas Connors joins. I'm hoping that... Um, I'm hoping that Ellen or Dan joins, whoever wants to join. Um, yeah, it's, uh, I, I'm just going to start talking and like I'm going all country. I'm going to start talking and uh, I had a few topics um, prepared. Also, I just want you to know I did do my hair and makeup. And I would like to thank Paul for setting me up. Uh, my partner, Paul, with uh, all the tech and uh, the encouragement. I thought I would maybe just start by uh, saying um, I had an incredible experience the other night. Uh, I met uh, Ian Tamlin, who is an icon of music in Canada, and I decided to go out and sing, which I do sometimes, and um, he was there, and my friend Ted was there, um, and I just, I really needed to sing. So I sang Angel from Montgomery by Bonnie Raitt and John Prime. Well, it's John Prime's song, but I sang the, the more of the Bonnie Raitt version. Mike May, an angel. Anyway, I won't sing. Um, thanks, Paul. But uh, so I, I was at, I went to an open mic and um, I was able to get on and Ian Tamlin was there and he was singing. I was just like, I'm just about passed out because he's so awesome. And uh, my very nice friend, Ted, was like, he's like, do you want to go on? And I'm like, not after that. Not after a legend. Um, so, Ted, I hope you're listening. I think he was going to join in. Um, he plays guitar and harmonica. And we've we've sung together a few times before. And, uh, like, between the two of them, they had me, like, Bridget Sandwich. Like, they, like I got singing advice from Ian Tamlin. <laughs> and, then, and then I had Ted saying, like, you want to go on stage? I've got you. Like, I'll back you up. Totally. So, uh, that was pretty awesome. I was, it was mind-blowing. And so I called my my dad, uh, Angelo, who's the, one of the kindest humans in the world. And I was like, you have to, because he loves Ian Tamlin. I'm like, you have to know who I met. And I took a picture of us together and sent it to um, to Angelo. Um, and he was just like, what? And I was like, I know. So I was like, can you believe it? And we're both like huge, like we love folk music. Um, I love the Grateful Dead, which many of you know. Um, I've done some anyway. Um, sorry, I won't say anything about my Grateful Dead experiences, but um, so my step, my dad, Angelo, has is a big, huge musical influence in my life. Like he's had a record collection since I met him when I was eight years old. And um, um, he played in a, a duo called Freight Train Banana in the 60s. <laughs> And uh, they were very, they were excellent. Like he was, and he taught me how to play guitar. He gave me my first guitar. And he just reminded me the other night that he met Gordon Lightfoot in a pub in Waterloo. And uh, someone was encouraging Angelo to sing. And he's like, well, I would, but I don't have a guitar tonight. And so Gordon Lightfoot was there and he's like, well, you can use my guitar. <laughs> and he's like, okay. <laughs> So he's an absolutely lovely, lovely person. Um, I, I'd love to show you Lola. She's kind of chilled out right now. And I'll tell you why the name of the show tonight is I'm a Difficult Woman is because uh, I am a bit of a handful. And uh, my poor partner, Paul. So last night... I'm sure everybody wants to hear about my hot flashes, but I had a hot flash and I woke up and I was just like 
freaking out. I was like, it's really hot in here. Make it colder. Just do everything to make it colder. And he's like, well, what do you want me to do, woman? I'm sleeping and the heat's off and the window's open. I'm like, I'm still really hot. And he's like, I think you're being rude or something like that. I was like, that's fair. Anyway, the poor man. I feel, I feel badly and I apologize because I'm a total ding dong. But, um, you know, hot flashes or something. <laughs> um, the other thing I was going to tell you about was, um, uh, basketball and prom dresses and they, they're not related, but, um, um, you know, the basketball season has been epic uh and i've really enjoyed that and i was just going to tell you a little bit how i am uh, ice packs oh ellen you're right <laughs> the all uh, honestly any hot flash tips uh are so welcome because i actually went <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm digressing a bit but i went to the fridge and i or the freezer and i got couple of ice cubes and I brought them back to to bed and Paul's like why are you cuddling with the ice pack <laughs> because I'm hot <laughs> he's like he's like you're so you can be really mean when you wake up I'm like uh, I didn't mean to be <laughs> um but I you know I'm not I wasn't really mean I was irrational and he's like well I didn't want to use that word but a little bit so oh, anyway, um, oh, I'm digressing. But um, what I was going to say about basketball is that I've been really enjoying the season. Um, March Madness was awesome. And uh, I've really been enjoying playing basketball lately. Frozen peas. Thanks, Ellen. <laughs> um, lately. And one of my great basketball experiences uh, in the last couple of months was uh, going to a local court um, when I was waiting for, for Paul to finish work. And um, I just, well, by the way, when I play by myself, I always win. <laughs> so, and like, what business do I have playing basketball at five foot one and at 51? And uh, anyway, so I was just playing by myself and this nice, this nice guy was sitting on the, uh, the picnic table right near where my my net was and uh he was just like he's seven feet tall and he's like I'm like oh do you want the court like I'll clear the court like you've got a game or you want to play and I'm like this is not my level and he's like no no it's fine and he's like do you want any tips I'm like yeah that'd be awesome and so me and this seven foot tall guy who's uh moved to Canada from South Sudan are playing one-on-one -on -one. and I was like Paul you got to get down here and um so uh, he, he was awesome he was so so sweet so there was that um and then another game I just played recently I just I went out by myself again it was a beautiful day in Ottawa and uh, I was playing at the the local court in this like I'm setting up my my net like there's nobody there except for these two kids who are like I don't know grade seven or grade eight and uh, I'm just like hey this is my court you don't cross my, like and you don't cross somebody's court it's rude but um you know they're kids and I'm like that's okay so they the one kid crossed my court and as I'm setting up under the net I'm like he just comes and he dunks he tries to dunk on in my net on my court while I'm underneath it. And I was just like, I just turned to him and I was not rude. I was calm, but I was just like, that is unacceptable behavior. We do not cross a court and you do not dunk on top of my head. And I said, I'm not a soccer mom here with snacks for you. <laughs> I didn't say that part, but I'm just like, not here with orange slices for your and snack I'm sorry I was gonna try not to swear but I'm just like and he just he's just like oh okay 
He didn't know. He didn't know. So I schooled him a little bit and I wasn't too, too aggressive. I was not aggressive. I was just like, you don't cross my court. You don't cross anybody's court and you do not dunk on someone's head. You ding dong. <laughs> I did not punch anybody in the face. Dan. I just was like, If you want snacks, if you want to be like that, go to the store. I'm not here. Anyway, thank you for tolerating my story on that. Oh, please, somebody jump in. My goodness. Um. Um. Thank goodness. I'm, I'm running out of material. Who's jumping in? Oh, okay. So the join link is in the chat, and I would uh, so welcome anyone who would like to join. Um, um, yeah. Well, I'm just gonna I'm just gonna keep rolling. Um, I'm just going to tell you like a little bit about what I've learned about being an, I am sometimes an aggressive person and I've been really learning about that and trying not to be. Um, but I grew up, there's a great song. It's by, um, I'll remember it. The, um, the devil, devil meets three. And the song is, uh, it's about, I grew up fast and I grew up lean and I grew up poor. So that was me and I'm not, I'm not crying the blues. Um, but, uh, there is an aggressive, I do have an aggressive side and, uh, there are reasons for that, but that is, uh, as a 51 year old, that's not always appropriate for, um, it's not appropriate to not be in control of your emotions. And, um, yeah, but I, yeah, I grew up pretty rough. So uh, I do, I I am aggressive sometimes, and um, there are reasons for that. But um, it's not appropriate anymore. I'm 51. So I'm learning. Ellen, I can't wait to read the article. Thank you. But I'll tell you, there are some good reasons to be aggressive sometimes. Like my some my some young people in my life my my kids i'm not um have said like mom you're either like snow white and like birds landing in your hands or you're like lagatha who's like a icelandic warrior person and i'm like well sometimes you need one sometimes you need the other and they're like yeah but you, that's a lot and i'm just like i know but sometimes, you know, you need someone to take you to the wall. Not you, not my kids, but like people, anyone who who hurts them or tries to hurt them um, or me. And it's like, I'm going to take you to the wall and then I'm going to win. So some of you know the story about um, uh, the person who broke in, there was a person who broke in through my bedroom window. Um, and I was not physically harmed, but uh, it was intense. Uh, I ran away, but I'm just like, and you know what? The first, the first thing to do is, and I've had great advice about this in terms of like some martial arts training and self-defense training. The first path is to avoid a situation. Um, sending this all out there to anyone who, any, anyone of any gender uh, the first path is to avoid a situation where you could be in danger. Um, the second path is to talk someone down if you think you can. And the third path is to fight if you need to fight. So I, we had a really interesting experience the other night. Paul and I were out uh, at a, a cafe and um, there was a quite a big gentleman and he was, um, he was, he was like, I knew he was older than myself and Paul. 
and uh, he was flirting kind of aggressively with a a, a very young woman and uh, who worked there. And she she knew what to do to, you know, deflect and stay safe. But I was just like, I just looked at Paul and he's like, please don't do not do this. And I'm like, I can't not do this. This kid, This is a kid who's like a young person who's like basically the ages of my in between the ages of my children and I was just like mm, no so I stood beside him and I started talking to him it's called verbal judo it's very very uh, effective um and uh, I just started talking to him and the young woman at the bar just looked at me and she's like thank you which I'm not saying this to say oh look at me blah 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 but you know the the guy and Paul was just like, "I'm going to be the one who gets punched in the face," and I'm like, "Don't want it to get to that." Um, but I just started talking to him, and he totally calmed down, and he was actually a very nice person, I think. And um, he had a hard day, and we had some, you know, we had a really good conversation, and and like uh, when he was calm. I said, you know what? You're 62 and she's 23. And I'm like, she does not welcome this attention. And he's like, you're right. I'm going to go home. I'm like, yeah. Okay. Thank you. So it was a really good outcome. And, um, would you come on? I need help. <laughs> The fox is, uh, I mean, I could keep going, but I think uh, I'd love to have somebody else come in, and that would be Paul. Um, while I'm waiting for him, I'll just tell you, I took, uh, I went to a, a really cool thing. So prom's coming up, you know, in a couple of months. And there was a thing in Ottawa where they were giving away, um, uh, Free prom dresses at um, at a, a place in Canada where I I, I took uh, I took one of my kids to and um, it was amazing like they were just giving away gently used prom dresses so um, anyway we there were some shenanigans with getting there and back but the uh, the most incredible thing happened to me. Um, which was that, uh, you know, I was having, I was having a challenging day. I'm not going to lie. Well, I won't share the details, but, um, this kind, kind woman who was working at the event was just like, you look like you're having a day. I'm like, well, I'm having a bit of a day. She's like, do you want some red shoes? I'm like, yeah, I would actually, that would be awesome. I could show you. And then I was just like, I had to Uber here and back for various reasons and um she's like can I call you an uber to go home after this like and I was fine like I was calm I was just tired because you know for, you know the dog that we've adopted and you know life business blah 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 and I said no no please don't do that don't you don't need to do that I can do that and um um, she's like, no, I'd really like to do that for you. So she ordered, uh, she ordered an Uber. She paid for it. And I said, well, how can I get you back? Like, how can I? She's like, don't worry about it. Just pay it forward. I'm just like, whoa, there is a lot of goodness in the world. All right, Paul, what do you got? Uh, a giant dog that's roaming around the apartment right now and won't sit beside me for some reason. And I have no idea why. <laughs> Lola, come here. Come here. What are you doing? Oh, my goodness. She's such a character. I, uh, honest to goodness, I can't keep up with her. She's, oh, she's coming to see you now. Hi. She just walked into the studio. <laughs> this is the studio wall behind me. So, And it's, I live in a one-bedroom apartment, and I have a full-fledged recording studio. Now, it's small. It's not big. But it works. And I like it. 
<clears throat> oh, Douglas is uh, here in the in the thing. Let me bring him in. Hey, yeah. I just saw I just saw that he's here. Hang on. There he is, right there. Awesome. Hello. Hello. Oh, how are you, Queen? I I am doing very well. How are you, as promised? <laughs> I'm so glad you're here. Thank you for joining. Oh. <laughs> Thank you for inviting me. Anytime. Hello, what do, you want to talk about? Sorry. what do I want to talk about? It's your show. Is, it, you the is that the Titanic staircase behind you? Uh, I just figured I would get something a little palatial. Right? Because the kids oh, well, no, demand, no, no, I like it. It's good. It's the good. kids demand glamour. And the it was requested to be with Crown. So I figured, you know, let's commit to the bit. I think <laughs> that <laughs> you, you are definitely in charge now. You look gorgeous. Oh. <laughs> uh, I, am wearing, will get I am wearing pants. I'm wearing Yay. pants. See? <laughs> <laughs> Flattery I'm, will get. Flattery I, will get you almost everywhere. <laughs> I'm not wearing pants. But I am wearing a skirt. All right. This does have to come off, however, because I can oh, only yeah. move my head so much before it goes flying. Okay. <laughs> what have you got? I honestly, I just want to hand it over. You can't I do that, though. It's your show. Time. You're the host. You got to come up with topics. You got to come up with a topic of conversation. All right. Well, let's you talk about. You got to be a bear. I'm 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 only I'm going to jump out in a minute because you've got you've got a queen with you and the queen and you can take over this whole show. So, well, thank. I'll you. leave it up to you. I'll see you later. You oh. forgive me for being a ding dong. Is that <laughs> what about what if we talk about man buns? Because it looks like you've got one and it looks like you're rocking it. Nah. This whole thing. Mm -hmm. I look like a Dairy Queen fun dip. <laughs> 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 Move over, Melissa Lanceman. Damn. <laughs> anyway, yeah, no, no. I just uh, because it, it it's so long, and um, there are. Um, uh, let's see. Maybe I can show you instead. There are uh, specific holes, as you can see oh, here, okay. for which to throw in bobby pins to get them uh, to stick in, and no way. usually, you know, like usually. You know, if you're a drag queen, which I, I have not done, so I, I I can't speak from experience. Um, but there's usually some hair th fabric that you put over your hair like this before you put on the wig. So that makes it easier to stick some bobby pins in too. So you can get something that's pretty heavy and get it to stay like okay. crazy fixed on that you could be jumping up and down and this this thing won't move. But uh Unless you're a very, 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 very experienced drag queen, put it in on yourself without anybody else to try to get the bobby pins in back to make it sure that it's on super tight that you can move your head no matter what, like sling back a shot while you're singing, uh, you know, a big oh, wow. number, right? Like this, and this thing will stay on. Uh, a little tough <laughs> to do is, solo. Is that something that's the theater based? Like to, because you're dancing on stage, you're. You know, um, so it's to keep everything in place. Well, yeah, you it, it, you you can't have things going. For, your your props can't go flying. So often, if you're on stage, for example, if you're watching a show and someone has a hat on, um, the hat is not just on the head. There's stuff making sure that that hat right. stays on the head. So when that someone jumps or flips or whatnot, that's that thing's not going anywhere. There's a. a a lot of glue and bobby pins and safety pins, and double-sided tape, and and a whole bunch imagine. of stuff, and and yeah, yeah, and, yeah. It, 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 there's a there's a lot of work to making that goes into magic, making magic happen. There's such artistry and such technical skill involved with, uh, well, from my very very limited knowledge. But I'd love to hear more about, you know, what goes on backstage, like. It's, it must be just wild. Like during the show itself? Mm hmm Well, during, see, everybody, um, there's a term, you usually hear it more in musicals, but it's true for every play. Um, now, some plays, like, for example, if it's just a two-hander and you're just two people and, you know, 
maybe it's not so much, but again, it depends, you know, how many changes of costume you might have and stuff like that mm -hmm. uh, in that, because, you know, you, there are two, ha two hander shows where people uh, change persona a lot. What does that mean? A two hander show it just means a, a play that only has two that no that only has two people. <laughs> <laughs> Sounds dirty. I know. I was trying not to be lewd tonight, but eh, it's over. <laughs> no, that's cool. Come and see my new play. Two <laughs> and it was saucy in the, in the chat who said that it looks like you're on the that you're on the, on the Titanic. I know. Are you? I think... No, I, I don't know if that oh. was it. That's not it. But uh, Paul asked me that too. Oh my God. <laughs> Look, Ma. It is called two hander. Well, if my hands are up. <laughs> I'd love to talk. <laughs> anyway, <laughs> anyway. No. <laughs> uh, no, no. It's. Um, so when you're when you're backstage, right? Like for mm. a musical, everybody thinks of choreography, everything that's on on the front of the stage. But whether mm -hmm. it's a musical or not, we have something called called the backstage ballet. Okay, tell me right? about that. I would love to know about that. Well, it's just it's the same thing as everything that's going on in front of the stage is choreographed, right? You know, the entrances happen at a certain time, the exits ha exits happen at a certain time, things go in specific places, there are marks, you know, on the front on the mm -hmm. stage itself to let you know where to put them. So the and all of that's been calculated after rehearsal rehearsal okay. to make sure that paths are clear, something's not in the way, right? Not all of you know, we, we've tried it. Whoops, oh yeah, we can't see your face when you do that. Okay, we have to move that over there, or, you know. So everything, all of that has been figured out. Yes. But backstage, it's like where like the last show that we did where do we put the wheelbarrow <laughs> so well, because it comes in and out like four times and it has to be somewhere that we can't trip in it and we can't like bang into the handles because if you hear that oh my goodness. everybody in the audience hears it right what happens in the wings if you're too loud so you know, you really have now. Fortunately, it's a musical, and it was we will rock you. So it was really amped up. So maybe if it's like if we drop something in the wings, <laughs> it might have been while a guitar riff was going on, and nobody would have noticed. But you know, if it's like small town Nebraska, nineteen thirty-two, oh and yeah. you're waiting at a week, you know, <laughs> it's like, oh damn, <laughs> you want to die when you're backstage. But so as people are going in and people are going out and you know, sets are being changed and all that kind of stuff, you know, there are places you have to be at certain times There are places that other people can't be. And if you're like, you're not in this scene and have nothing to do, just get the hell out and go to the green room, stay there. Because as things are coming out, there's like, whoops, whoop, whoa, wee, wow, okay, I'm moving over here. You know, and the first couple of times you, you know, like, for example, one of the changes I was doing, I was bringing in sort of like a backdrop and somebody was coming out, coming out with the chair and we were using the same entrance. And I was going out with the backdrop as he was coming out, like rocket speed with the chair. And it's like, I, I almost ate chair twice until oh I figured God. out, like no. right in the teeth until I figured out, you know what, it's like, Here's what I'm going to do, right? He's usually, he rockets out. So he's going to come out first. So I'm just going to wait right here. And I said, and I'm just, I'm not even going to try to enter with my piece until he comes. Because I could just, like, literally, we'd almost end up, like, face to face. And he's holding the chair forward, of course, to get it in. So you can really the, get hurt. Oh, you could get, you could get really hurt. And it's all dark back there, right? You have, like, you might have, um, a little sort of like you know lamp that's faced okay. towards the wall that has like a blue gel around it or just oh. very very tiny little blue led christmas lights like in one little okay. corner just to say that it's lit so that you don't trip over stuff and you could like it's and some theaters wings are you know are wider than others <laughs> i'd love to tell you two ballet stories i have one of my really yeah. good friends uh she's a little older than than me actually she's 10 years older than me but she was in the winnipeg ballet mm -hmm. and she also danced for parsons in uh, mm. new york city and she was also a winnipeg whatever the football team is like cheerleader just to make some money on the side okay, yeah blue moppers yeah and uh, the blue bombers, right? Right. The, the bombers. And anyway, so she was in uh, some small town and there were 
rehearsing in a, a squash court. Okay. Yeah. And she was like dead tired, right? So she's like resting, stretching, getting ready. And they're like, all right, time to go. You're on. And she jumped up and <laughs> ran into the door. Got knocked out. Ouch. Like she got knocked out. And then she's just like, no, no, I'm kidding. And then she went on stage with like a concussion. Like, not, it's, I'm laughing because it's not funny, but it's funny. But she just, she's just <laughs> like, she, she, you know, that's what you do when you, when you perform. The show must go on. The show must go on. The other one was. I had a, sorry, I had a no, dance okay. number once that I had prepared and it was for charity and literally two minutes before going on stage the baby toe <laughs> baby toe on my right foot just goes up oh. there's some muscle thing that just like starts pulling it upwards I'm going what the freaking hell I like oh they're like God, they're like they're so they're ending they're like thanking the it's like this talent show type thing right for, for charity and they're thanking the previous person and they're about like to introduce me and i'm on the floor like one leg up here you know grabbing the toe pulling yanking just like go down and keep knocking it <laughs> everything so it had never happened to me before in my life it has never happened again it's just at one point you know and, and i know it's like some people mention it for fingers like sometimes they have a finger that sort of goes yeah. up right like this but like one toe just right it's like i'm about to dance for 100 people solo right? on a stage toe go down not the time honestly broken toes hurt so much and i was going to tell you a story about my friend cynthia when she was on a train in in um germany going to a performance and anyway i'll talk, i'll come back to it another time but and not to brag but i was a gymnast and i had a broken toe oh there's lola um yeah. i was um I have one uh, trophy that I've won in my life. I was the most improved rookie on the worst gymnastics team in Kitchener Waterloo. Okay. Okay. Hey, <laughs> no, they say I... that in show business, be the best thing in a bad show. <laughs> <laughs> our, um, I mean, our, our coach, honestly, I want to shout out. Any of my Waterloo peeps who are listening, Kitchener Waterloo people, like this woman, this coach, she would coach gymnastics in one gym and volleyball in the other. And she would run back and forth between the two. So we were definitely unsupervised a lot. And uh, I never, I never, well, I had a broken toe. But um, anyway, so I went to my, my first competition as, you know, a very, shitty gym and i was just like you know i'd never done anything like that before and uh, there was a record player uh with my song from my floor routine and um i went on and i'm just like i'm ready and i started my routine and then somebody tripped the cord on the record player so that it went out and i'm just like Fuck. what do i do <laughs> Oh, oh, oh no! It's like, uh -huh. and I'm just like, I guess we'll just keep dancing. You know, yes. I'm like, I totally <laughs> forgot my routine, Douglas. Like, just totally. I'm, I'm like, let's just do some cartwheels and some back <laughs> and springs, and you know, this is Kitchener. No one's going to the Olympics here. <laughs> Something. It's still oh. burned in my brain. And I'm just like, I'm wearing sparkly pants and I'm doing a dance and there's no music and I suck. <laughs> I didn't I didn't win that day. <laughs> Don't you there, there's something comforting about that feeling? <laughs> there are times I go to an audition. And I come back home and Alex asks me, so how did it go? I was like, yeah, they won't be calling. <laughs> it's like, <laughs> it's like, it's like uh, I, didn't, I didn't get this one. <laughs> so how do you know? Just, just trust me. <laughs> they won't be calling. 
<laughs> at the end, you I just know. sort of, you know, like you do a little, well, plie, thank yeah. you, bow. Thank yeah. you very much. <laughs> well, I tried. <laughs> <laughs> so I don't, yeah, again, I was like <sighs> the shittiest gymnast in Kitchener Waterloo. And, um, <laughs> but I got a trophy. <laughs> We we have these. Uh, Everyone got a trophy. You know, I play curling, right? We have this guy at the club that has this shirt that says "World's Okayest Curler." Oh, that's awesome! Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> okay. I did. I'm we okay. All... <laughs> we, uh, I don't know, people who know Kitchener Waterloo. I, I know there's some of you out there who do. And a big Oktoberfest scene. There's a big German uh, community and um, in Douglas, you know that too. Yep. So we had an awards ceremony at the Schwaben Club, which was very fancy. Like we had like a pork, I'm sorry, a pork schnitzel dinner. Like you dressed up and you went to the awards ceremony. And that's where I received my trophy. <laughs> I mean, that's classy, right? I think I, I think I brought a date too. <laughs> Would you like to come to the Schwaben Club? Me, I'm getting an award for being the best, most worst gymnast. In well, I'm sure. You, I'm sure. I'm sure that's not how you framed it. <laughs> Please tell me that's not how you sold it then. I'm not. I'm not a good seller, man. I oh, could have. I, I I I got a date though, but that was good. And I, and I got. I will show you the trophy sometime. You did not. Do you want to come in my room and see my trophy? Really? <laughs> really? Really? <laughs> Girl. I, I think I. I I lack some social social skills. I thought I didn't have any game. <laughs> Holy crap. Can I show you my red shoes? <laughs> oh my god, I love it when you get the giggles. Yeah, no, I mean and I probably wore like oh. something something from Kmart. Something fancy. Oh man. Jeez. <laughs> Oh, like, hi. My name is Bridget, and <laughs> I like French fries and gymnastics and dressing up fancy. With anyway, these Ooh. are the aren't they awesome? Yeah. So, sorry, I don't know how to put them on the screen. I got these yeah, for yeah, no, 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 are, mm. they're pretty sexy, right? Like I got them for free at this beautiful event at the prom event, and I'm just like. I kind of want to wear them all day. It's like ruby red pumps. It's like if Dorothy decided she was going to go high class, just I leave know, Kansas right? for New York City. Totally. Click I'm your so heels together three times, sister. See where those take you. I'm so thrilled mm. with them. And there's like somebody, <laughs> somebody donated them. I brought a dress to donate as well to the event, but uh, just like, but prom dresses are so expensive, right? Like, uh, that I wouldn't know. <laughs> but I would assume that anything that is intended to be used just once. Yeah. 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 And Wedding so dress, prom dresses. My, I have to tell you a little story about my friend, uh, Karen. She, her name is Karen, but she's not a Karen. And uh, we went to prom, like, we went the same year. And she bought, this was in the, the 80s, a, a dress from Laura Ashley peach mm -hmm. silk with a huge lace collar six hundred dollars at that time and Yeesh. they were not from wealth uh her family and but she's like mom if if you buy me this dress like i'll go splits on it and i'm gonna wear it to my wedding but she did not <laughs> And she still has the dress. And I visited her in Philadelphia when I went down to visit her. And I was like, you got to get that dress out. And we both put it on and just giggled our butts off. I'm like, I can't believe 
you made your mom buy you this dress. But it's go- it was gorgeous, and she looked incredible. So anyone out there who has kids going to prom, don't mm. buy them. Don't buy them that. <laughs> or buy them something that they will wear again. Yeah, or don't eat, buy something used and don't eat it, right? Like, mm-hmm. Yes. Did you go to your prom? Uh, actually, my high school one, I did not, actually. Um, if you don't mind me asking. No, 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 don't mind at all. Uh, uh, I didn't. Um, to, I had, um, unfortunately, uh, the last half of my last year of high school, I had a couple of health issues uh, oh, that uh, took me out. Um, so I did most of the, the the last half of my high school year at uh, uh, pretty much at home and sent in my assignments. So I, but I, so, but I, I wasn't well enough yet uh, for prom. Um, uh, but uh, at university, our last year, we did we had a a prom thing as well uh, in our in our department uh at the upstairs at the national arts center and a uh, nice dance and i, I did uh, go to that uh, i uh, invited a young lady with whom i was very good friends i brought her a corsage and everything so, and, uh, yes so and uh, we danced and uh, she looked very very elegant she was in a Lovely. very light blue her name was marissa yeah, I don't know if she's watching or she might see this, but I love you, girl. Oh, um, how lovely. And uh, yes, uh, they played New York, New York, and she was elegant and I was elegant. And, you know, we did this whole thing where I hold her hand and she just went around the room and danced as if you know, we were back in the day and just taking up space. And it was a very, 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 very lovely night. So, uh, oh, I, that sounds beautiful. Yeah, I did. Uh, I did that. But uh, yeah, prom. Uh, but had I been in uh, in okay health, yes, I would have. I would have. I would have gone to prom in high school. Uh, actually, uh, for a lot of people, high school was really kind of rough. But for me, high school was pretty darn good. I have to I'm say. Glad. And I wasn't you like. And, and it's weird because like I wasn't. Um, I mean, everybody but me knew I was gay. For the first few years. Um, oh, okay. So, uh, yeah, yeah, and then uh, I was, I was one of these kids that got good grades, and I was a bit of a keener, and I wasn't particularly. Well, you're a pretty smart like, fella. <laughs> yeah, but you know, but the high school, right? Mm-hmm. Like the, 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 I don't. Do you ever remember that song, "The Sweater," by Marin Cadell? Yeah. Oh my gosh, pa- Douglas. She was actually the babysitter of my ex-husband. No way. Way. Ah, I'll go Marin on. Cadell. Okay. Well, Before, she has a thing yeah. in the sweater, right? This is, you know, you know, I, I swear, I swear, this is true. Okay. Yeah. So, so she says, you know, you're looking for the boy of the, your dreams who's the same boy of the dreams as all your friends. Now, when you're talking about the sweater, look for brown or gray or blue. Don't look and, for anything that has something in it because that means it's different and different is not what you're looking for. So that's what it is when you're in high oh school, right? Because like, you do not want to be different. You want to be, it's like you, you just want to fit in. So, uh, and it smelled like a goat. Yeah, it said Gloriola. <laughs> like my go- the, yeah. Yes, oh my exactly. Gosh. I love that so, reference. So we are, um, so I was the kid in high school that was more sort of like they're inviting everyone to the party and like this. And, and, and what about Douglas? Oh, yeah, he's cool. <laughs> yeah. You know, and then they invite me. So I, I wasn't I wasn't in the popular crowd, but because I wasn't great at sports, but I played them and mm-hmm. did manage to get on some teams because I was, you know, good at school and would be willing to help people yeah. if they asked for help uh, because I hang around with the audio video geeks and I hanged around with the artsy fartsies and a bit with mm-hmm. the jocks. And so I had an in into pretty much every one group. So I was known, everybody knew me, but I wasn't popular or cool by any stretch of the imagination. Right. So it was one of those things where it's like, yeah, yeah, Douglas, he's all right. That, and that was pretty much it. So yeah, I got teased a little bit, but it was always, always very clearly good natured and good fun. Oh well, I'm glad. Right. I'm glad. And uh, and I knew I was appreciated, and I knew I was liked. This, but I was, but you know, it was one of those things like you know, oh, oh, you're hanging around with Douglas, right? So you know, oh, we're on the same, we're on the badminton team together, and so I'm like, oh, okay, I guess that's cool. But it's sort of like, but 
know, hanging around with Douglas. Well, yeah, I kind of like him. It's like, no, it would never be there. It was just, yeah, Douglas, you know, he's okay. <laughs> right? <laughs> well, but I'm... I ended up, but I had a great, I, I, you know, I wasn't teased. I wasn't taunted. I wasn't okay. bullied, uh, you know, because I had ends. I had ins, you know, I had a good circle of friends. I did play sports. You know, I, I all the extracurriculars because I was a keener. I did all of them, you know, the ones that interested me. So, I mean, I had a, yeah. For me, high school was actually pretty good. I'm so I'm actually so happy to hear that, and um, <clears throat> and it was better than being at home. So <laughs> yeah, well, I know a little bit about that, but uh, mm -hmm. um, I so oh, this is my how my sports sports experience started, and I had a very good high school high school experience too, but um. In grade nine, I was because I had never played uh, team sports before, and I had no friends on the first day of grade nine. And and I met this friend, and uh, she's like, "Do you want to be like uh, the water girls for the boys' football team?" And I'm like, "Okay, <laughs> sure." <not>? So <laughs> I told my my daughter that, and I was just like, "I didn't know. Like, I really didn't feel like." team sports were approachable to me. I didn't realize that I was athletic um, until I became the best, worst gymnast in the school. Mm -hmm. and anyway, uh, my sports experience has, has gotten, you know, much better. But I was like, oh, I, I'm like, this is the most embarrassing thing about high school, which is not the worst. I mean, it's the first world problem. It was like, I was the water girl on the grade nine football boys team hey, hey. and i told my daughter this and she's like you should have been on the team i'm like thank you that's very nice <laughs> <laughs> oh man and it was fun like we, i had fun but i was just like i didn't think i could play a, a sport like that well see see it was the same thing for me because i was a well, i got into dance when i was eight mm -hmm. so I had physical abilities, but I'd never really, not really played organized sports all that well. Because mm -hmm. I basically, when I was a kid, from the waist down was like 85% of my weight. <laughs> so I had like a big legs and a big old butt. Oh, so I uh, couldn't run. Bug donk -a -donk. So mm -hmm. you know, couldn't run fast. Couldn't throw, couldn't catch. <laughs> when you're about eight, nine, ten, those pretty much all the sports that are available to you then are involve running, catching, or throwing. Right. <laughs> right. So I was like, uh, yeah, not particularly good at any. Uh, uh, but then, you know, this turns out that the sports I was good at with stuff like tennis and badminton mm. and curling which is you know, yeah which is not you, hockey baseball football basketball which you've so, continued to pursue right like, yeah but i found them later curling. i found them in yeah. high school well, yeah. my mom introduced me to badminton that was cool but it was in high school that there was a badminton team there weren't any in okay. elementary school it was in high school that there was a, there was a track team in elementary school there was a volleyball team in elementary school there were dodgeball teams in elementary school but uh, that was about it. But all the other sports that open up to you when you get to high school, some high schools have a swim team. Uh, we didn't, but some high schools do. Some high schools had, you know, uh, archery teams. Again, we didn't, but but there was more, right? There, there was handball yeah. and there was curling and there was golf and there was, uh, you know, so there's tennis. So there's sports that, and turns out that those were the sports I was uh, better suited yeah. As, as uh so all this time that i didn't think i was good at sports or but but i found the ones and that's you know i think that's what gave me an in again is that i wasn't great at any of them but i was good enough that people would want to play and by playing then you know i did spend time with the jocks yeah right because a lot of the jocks in high school were multi-sport like they made the football jock may yeah, have been, yeah. been a freedom of football jock but may have been also playing volleyball right or you know the person that was playing soccer may have also been playing handball so uh, it's um oh, yeah. uh, you right uh, the the person that was doing track and field may also have been doing bad badminton in the winter so it's uh 
by by doing that it was sort of like you know it's like well you know he's in there and he's trying and he's doing it and you know yeah. and like this and you know i mean i did get on the tennis the track and the the badminton teams and the curling teams so i mean i was good enough because wasn't the curling we were good we actually won some stuff at the city level uh, at high school level but all the other stuff no. <laughs> it's like not not even participation trophy but at least better not good enough to get on the team and I'm right. I'm sure you remember, and I know Cassie. I know you know this, and also I'm appreciating the chat about ketchup chips. Mm. Um, the participation awards. Yes. So I love them. I think they're back. Um, but I remember I, and you know, I, I am going to brag. Uh, I did win the 800 meter sprint because I was the only one in it. Ah. <laughs> Yeah, but I did win, honestly. I still remember this vividly. This was in Brandon, um, the flexed arm hang challenge. Oh, yes. So I was yes. hanging like this, and I was like, I was, you know, I was from rural Manitoba. There was a, a farm boy, Jeff Sangster. He was trying to be my boyfriend, and we were in the flexed arm hang challenge together, and we just hung there until one of us dropped, and he dropped, and I was like, ah. Thank you. <laughs> I won, but there that was. Like, but no, honest. That program was that was and is amazing. Like, mm -hmm. I mean, and who doesn't need to do a shuttlecock? Who doesn't need no. to do a shuttlecock? No, do you remember that? That was part of one of the challenges. Was like you shuttle like from left to right. And you pick things up, and then you run them back. Oh yes. Sorry, there. I'm sorry. That was not not uh, very descriptive. But the shuttlecock. It was in yes, that. Yes, uh, yes, It was a really hilarious bit about it in that show. Um, I can't remember what it's called, but uh, it's like about small, small town Manitoba, or I don't know, small Corner town gas? area. Corner gas. Yes. Okay. So there's a bit about there in it in um, um, about. The shuttlecock and, and one of the people in it does he's like he he uses it for some reason and he was like i never thought this would be useful <laughs> the brandon sportsplex cat i'm just answering cats um yes. uh i just didn't know it was just at my school <laughs> but yeah if anyone wants to see something that's going to make them pee their pants check out that shuttlecock thing like there's no reason that anyone needs to learn how to run like that <laughs> it's, that is not a skill that is needed in the world <laughs> oh my god <laughs> I... like hey this is why I can't I and I don't I couldn't be on online dating. It's like I was really good at shuttlecock. <laughs> no, no. And the flex arm hang. And I no. have a, a platinum level participation award. <laughs> like, do you want to hang out with me? Like, no. No, that's not good. That's not a good dating profile. <laughs> Can you imagine the obituary. Mother of two consultants community involved silver medalist at the arm thing whatever <laughs> got saucy going oh my god the shuttlecock episode is amazing I don't, I don't know like who thought of that who would have thought of that you know <laughs> and you, you perhaps know, this is going back to like staying on the on the athletics theme you know the the guy who invented or i don't know if he invented it but the pilates guy in new york city okay um i can't remember his name but my friend cynthia who's the ballerina uh she could tell me but uh she took pilates from him he's quite famous and um okay this is this is people might pass out this is yucky but I he um, the Pilates. pilates I think I think that's the person. He died in his studio, lit on fire. Really? But he, yeah, but he hung on. He did like a flexed arm hang for like a long time, just trying to get past the fire. And unfortunately, he did not make it. But 
Um, yeah, pretty wild. Okay, not the same guy. This guy here died of oh. emphysema. Oh, okay. But my friend Cynthia, um, she's actually, in she taught me how to dance. She taught me, well, I did ballet when I was really young, mm -hmm. four, four and five years old. But uh, she and I hung out a lot. And so she taught me how to to properly, I don't, I don't do, a, like, I can't, I'm not really like, a, like you are. Um, but I can do my five positions. And okay. um, I just actually bought some ballet shoes. And nice. Nice. Because I can go on point. Yes. But I try to do it very, very carefully. Yes. So any, like I try to warm up, like, because I'm old. Yes. You know, and I try to like, I do my, but if you have any advice about that, because going on point, you can really hurt your feet. Yeah, yeah. No, you really do have to warm up for that. I can't give you any specific advice for ballet because I never took a day of it. Uh, mm -hmm. Again, because of the badanka dunk, I think it was my second day of dance class. My badanka. dance teacher goes, you'll never be a dancer. You're but too big. God accepted to the Bachelor of Fine Arts at Concordia University. Lady showed you, but uh, <laughs> and then promptly busted up my knee. <laughs> but uh, yeah, with uh, I, I would suspect because of having so much pressure on a small part of the body that you would have to make sure that uh, everything and you know as much in your foot can be as stretched out and limber mm -hmm. and, and warmed up when not before you even attempt to get on point to start in the first place because that's yeah we're, yeah. we're, we're talking about uh, the, this uh, you know bones that are big that's one thing but when you start getting to the bones that are smaller and more delicate mm -hmm. uh, yeah I, I don't want to get injured like i'd like to be able to walk when i'm old <laughs> Um, I mm -hmm. took my I took my son to the National Ballet. Um, the and uh, I took him when he was quite young. I took him to the Nutcracker. Sorry, this is a ballet story. Mm -hmm. And um, I thought, oh, this will be nice, like nice time for the two of us. And uh, he was so bored. He was oh. just completely. Un I'm like, that's yep. a, like he's like. We went out and had a cookie at the break, and yep. then I'm like, he's like. Then we went back in, and uh, um, at the intermission, he was like, everyone's clapping. He's like, is it over? Can we go home? <laughs> I'm like, yeah, we can go home. We don't have to finish it. But he was just like, this is so boring. <laughs> yep, not his thing. Yeah, I, I know. like, yeah. okay, it's not your thing. I tried. I waited a good long while before I saw my first ballets. I haven't mm -hmm. I haven't seen a lot of them. But to be honest, I'm I'm more I'm much more of a, a lyrical and modern dance fan. I'm watching them stuff and, and you know stage musical Broadway type uh, fan. But uh, yeah, the <clears throat> when uh, let's just say I'm glad I waited that I was until I was someone of a certain age to see my first ballet or my first opera. Because I do not think I would have appreciated them. At a certain, <laughs> there's a time in my life I'm pretty sure I would not have said, oh, my God, please. Oh, my gosh. Well, it was so funny. I mean, like, I, I sing in an early music choir now, right? It's like, yeah, I'm, uh, it's like Bach is the most modern thing we do. We're talking like old music. You know, sometimes we're like, sometimes we're like no, Bach chanting. Is super modern. <laughs> Yeah, but that's as that's as modern as we get, right? Yeah. We go like from five hundred to eighteen hundred something. So like, and like we sing things in other languages and whatnot. So it's like, I'm sitting there and I'm thinking like, there was a time in my life where this kind of music made me want to poke my eyes out with knitting needles. <laughs> Honestly, right? like opera this, still yeah. makes me want to like stick a fork yeah. in my eye. Like I don't, I don't really appreciate. I mean, yeah. I appreciate it, but I just don't. It's not my thing. Yeah, and now it's like you know opera is not my thing but you know if my sweetie says hey you know, carmen's in town let's go see it it's like yeah i'm not sitting there oh my god i gotta go to opera because i've now seen four since i've been with them i've never seen one before i was with them but i've seen yeah. four in the 11 years we're together and i have to say you know what they, they're pretty good well it is an absolute uh absolutely amazing uh profession it's just i'm just like mm. Mm -mm. But you it's not what? a go-to for me. It's not something I would think of first. No, I'm for myself. Honestly, if someone invited me to an opera, I'd be like, I'd rather just 
stay home and eat ketchup chips. <laughs> the, you probably have to get the good one, a, a good one or a right one, because they're <laughs> they're not all equal in terms of intrigue <laughs> and story. Well, well. <laughs> there's some. I, I don't know, Douglas, if this resonates with you. We're there's a little bit of talk at the chat about the 4-H club. I don't know if that was something in your life, but unfortunately not. It was it, and I love how like I was a country girl. You know, I was living in in Brandon, and uh, and the experiences that uh, Cassie and Ellen. I didn't know you did 4-H. Like what I learned to do was how to make a meal for a man and set the table properly. Saucy. Yeah, I'm like, what? or for a ta for a group or a man and. Um, my friends who were in 4-H, who were in other parts of the country, like in Alberta and, and stuff, were like, well, we learned how to train a horse and water a cow and cut off testicles. And I'm like, you know what? That sounds more interesting. I got to admit it does. Yeah, and I mean, not that I don't, I mean, that, like, to, to do it kindly, and with respect to the animals, but my, my, yes. I think I've, I've told this story before, but my friend Holly, um, is the daughter of a, of a cattle rancher and we are so unalike and she's, I'm like, you went to 4-H too? She's like, yeah. Like, what did you do? And she's like, I was given, I had a calf and I raised it. Uh, I called it full feed because that's what you do. You you feed them until they're mm -hmm. fat enough to slaughter. And then she's like, and then I killed it. <laughs> I was like, well, I learned how to set a table. <laughs> that very yeah. different experiences. Yeah. I, 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 and I can imagine again at, you know, at a certain age, younger age, it's like, you got to do what? <gasps> cool, man. <laughs> I mean, I don't think I would have had the stomach to do that, but I'm like, well, I don't know. We both have yeah. skills, but yeah, I, I I would not have. I I couldn't even take the first year biology in high school. When, you know, I got to like oh, my yeah. the professor the, <laughs> the teacher bless, bless him convinced me, got me to register for the class, and we and I told him it's like I just cannot cut that frog. I'm sorry. Like this, he says, don't worry. It's, it's not gonna, you'll have some time to get into it and get the passion. And it was like third week, we're cutting the frog. It's like what already? <laughs> I just pulled out of the class. <laughs> like, no, I just cannot do that. I can't. I'm with you. I skipped Frog Day. I, I when you like dissect the frog, I was just yeah. like, I went into the class and I was like, I just can't do it. This is disgusting. Like and somebody I know told dead, me that. Like, yeah, and well, then somebody told me that there was a pig coming later on or something. So it was just like, oh, no, fun. no. And let's just put it this way: I was never, ever, ever going to be a doctor. <laughs> it's, it's just that. Uh, well, no, please. Too squeamish. Too squeamish. No, it's not going to happen. I can pass out in a heartbeat. Well, yeah. so what's on? Like, do you want to? What's on your show tomorrow, and then and then uh, I think we should wrap. What do you think? Like, what oh, do you? Gonna, yes, absolutely. I would love anything political you want to say. I'd I'd uh, so welcome it because you're so um, you're oh so insight you're so insightful, and I always appreciate your commentary. Hmm. Um, I'm not sure I can riff. I would have to have like you know. Oh, that's okay. Anything, but uh, I mean, you know, since you know this is um, fun and friendly feminist conversations, yeah, no, we had mentioned uh, on our show today about something going on in the United States, mm -hmm. uh, in Arizona, uh, where um, since well, you know, since Little Road versus Wade, yeah, has been overturned. Oh, oh that's really um, huge. It, it's that's it's huge. gone back to being a an issue that is a. Uh, more determined by the states than by the federal government. The, there is some uh, battle within the Republican Party itself to see whether or not uh, they want to bring in a national type thing. But the argument has always been up until now that it was something about states' rights. And now now that the the car, the dog caught the car and states are, there's 21 states now in the United States that have extreme abortion bans laws yeah. that are in effect that uh, is covering at least a three million, uh, one third of the population, or something like that, uh, that is of reproductive age at the moment. Uh, so it's a uh, it's 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 a pretty uh, bad thing. Uh, 
and what happened is that when they overturned Roe versus Wade, it went back to being a state's issue. And then the states had laws on the books from long ago that they never did it because often people and legislators will go through the, the laws and say, we haven't used this one 100 years, we haven't used this, this doesn't serve anymore, and they will pass a bill to actually remove the old laws, to take them off. These old laws were never taken off the books, so now that Roe versus Wade hasn't been, has, has been turned away, well, they're looking and says, well, 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 look at this law that we have from 1864. Oh, for fuck's sake. Sorry, right. I was going to try not to swear. Yeah. So um, basically the law was overturned and uh, they tried to pass, uh, re reduce the amount of time and they had agreed on 15 weeks. The lower court had agreed on that. And that was in 2022. So just two years ago. And now it seems that there's a court that is uh, the Supreme Court of the state has decided that that 15 week thing. Well, we don't need to have that anymore since Roe doesn't exist anymore. You don't have to do that. You can just go back to the law in 1864 that was there. And that one does not uh, allow uh, abortion mm. even for the purposes of, uh, for uh, because of rape and incest. It does allow them for preserving the health of uh, or the life of the mother. Uh, and it makes uh, it punishable from by two to five years anybody who performs the procedure. Uh, the current government of the state said that uh, she does not approve of this. The current attorney general says that she will not be enforcing this law uh, so long as she's governor. Mm. And it looks that there's a, because in the United States, they have something called ballot measures. Uh, so it seems that uh, activist groups have been able to collect enough signatures to put a ballot measure on, uh, uh, to put a measure on the ballot to come this November when they have their federal when they, they have their federal elections in the United States, which a lot of people are thinking might help the Democrats down ballot for especially for down ballot races because there's a lot of women that might have not have come out to vote Democrats specifically, but they might come out to vote vote for reproductive rights and while they're there, then vote mm -hmm. for other people. Uh, and in every I think there's been 15 measures so far in the states that have been put on ballots and every single one of them has passed. Even in states like Kansas, people have said, no, 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 we're either protecting these rights or enshrining them in our state constitutions. Um, so uh, a lot of people are hoping that that's what's going to help uh, President Biden win rewin the election all these ballot measures that are on there will bring more people out but for the ballot measures themselves uh, that's what's going on in arizona and then in uh, florida uh, a couple of weeks uh, just before that they had announced uh, a certain thing um, an another me measure over there i think it was uh, i think it was 15 weeks for the whole thing so florida court ruled that in 30 days from now some that that was maybe about a week ago, so maybe about like two weeks, two and a half to three weeks, a six-week ban on abortion can go into effect. Come on. So a lot of states, you know, I think at one point it was like 22, and then they cut it down to 15 and whatnot, and now they're going down to six, and six is like, you know, most people, th that's basically symbolically saying you still have the right because a lot of people don't even know they're pregnant yet at six weeks. Yeah. Um, so that was a 4-3 ruling in, in that court. and But the court also ruled that a ballot measure on abortion can go on the ballot for the November election in Florida as well, which has everybody always considers a swing state, but for the last few elections has been a pretty much reliably Republican state. So they're hoping that this one might uh, flip it. And if the Florida flips to the Democratic column with the Electoral Colleges, then Biden wins because it's one of the big states population-wise. Uh, Trump wouldn't even have a chance there. So, uh, but in Florida, a ballot measure has to pass by a margin of 60%, not 50%. So, uh, that's how do you the, know all this stuff, Douglas? But, but thank you for speaking to that. But how do you it, know all this stuff? Uh, I, 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 I follow and curate news for our show, so I, I take stuff I know, down. Yeah. And some sometimes I, I don't need them for my show, but I know I might need them for another show or a, a general discussion might be come on, and then I can like point to something internationally, even though it's not, you know not a Canadian focus to give an idea of what's going on in other places. Because, um, you know, I know the abortion issue in the United States is a United States thing and we're more of a Canadian show, but I like to mention them on our show because I know what the movement going on here is in Canada and they want to try to tap into that in the United States. And so we need to be eyes wide open by to see how extreme it can go and to not have any illusions that there aren't people over here in our own country that are planning that fate. 
over mm-hmm. here for our sisters. And uh, like I said, um, I show often enough, uh, not on my watch if I have anything to say about it. So mm-hmm. forewarned is forewarned. You know, I, it's it, and that's why your show is so important because it's uh, it's about global relevance. It's about it's about being feminist or humanist or however someone identifies, and it's just like not on my fucking watch. Is that okay? And Paul just flagged for me. Um, and sorry, I will just say I have I have like five friends in my circle who have had abortions. Like so thankful that they. I mean, that's, if I had to make that choice, I'm like, thankfully I never have, but I'm just mm-hmm. like, I'm glad that they had, the, that they could do that. And it's, it's, an, it's a very, very hard choice. And, uh, but they deserve it. Right? Yeah. And I think a lot of people on the other side of the argument forget, they assume it's like, you know, you do it and you forget it and then you move on. And it's like, no, no, this is a, this is a hard choice. It's a hard choice you live with for the rest of your life. Yep. And like, I'm, I won't say, well, I, I will say like, I, I would have been heartburned to have to make that choice and thankfully I never did. Um, but uh, thanks for fighting the good fight. Yeah. Okay. Do what you can, I guess, you know, mm-hmm. do all the good you can, all the ways you can for as long as you can. And that's why, right. um, you know, you're, everyone's welcome in this space who's fighting the good fight and i thank you so much for joining douglas i really appreciate it well thank you so much for inviting me on and wanting me on as a guest you know i love you i love you too very very much and uh, i'm happy to be your am i your first guest no no because you had guests last week yes yes so i'm happy to be uh, your first sure first member of royalty you're an honored guest and you and you carried me so thank you there you go thanks queen a little bit i may call you that yes (laughs) i hereby do declare mademoiselle fox's fun and friendly feminist conversations a must see show (laughs) queen beaver has said it is so let it be so make it happen kitties make it work well thank you well i guess we'll wrap and we'll join it is done. success is yours <laughs> see you on the chat tomorrow all right thanks everybody love you big thanks bye hugs. everyone bye I... oh i lost him was he gonna stay on for a long moment Douglas still.